Good day, everybody. This is Michael Leveris from Jurisq.com, a legal network. And I'm bringing you back Irina Yedgarovan, a Medicaid Hi. and a state's attorney. Hi, Irina. Welcome back. Thank you for your time. Hello. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Uh, last time we spoke, you did an excellent job explaining what you do, uh, how to qualify for Medicaid. Uh, but still some questions remain, some more basic uh, issues that I want to get into. You know, a lot of people get confused when they hear a will, a trust. What is the difference between them? Yeah. If you have a trust, do you need a will? If you have a will, do you need a trust? What's easier to deal with when unfortunately somebody passes away? What's the easiest form to get the inheritance through which mechanism, yeah. a will, a trust? Can we please get into it? Yeah. So start from are, the basics. Those... Imagine we yeah. don't know anything. Yes, those are excellent questions. I get asked that all the time. Um, and they're very different, a trust and a will. Um, any trust will actually avoid what you will have to go through with a will. So whether or not you have a will, there is a court process that the estate has to go through before your beneficiaries inherit anything. Mm -hmm. So if there's a will, that process is called probate in the surrogate's court. Okay. If you don't have a will, it's administration in the surrogate's court. So a, a basic impetus for doing a will, even though you still have to go through the court process, is you get to decide where your property goes when you die. The, mm -hmm. the state has a statute. So if you don't say it in this written instrument, the will, the state decides who inherits. And it goes in order of your nearest kin, and each state has a different statute. So for example, in New York, the nearest relatives, if you're married, your spouse, and if you have children, your spouse gets the first 50,000 plus one half of your estate, okay. and the children get the rest in equal shares. Mm -hmm. If you don't have children, your spouse gets everything. If you're not married and you have children, your children get an equal share. So if you have no children, your parents. So then the statute goes in levels of succession, who's your nearest kin. So okay. if you have children, for example, but you don't want them to inherit equally, let's say you have a house or uh, an account or any asset that's just titled in your name will have to go through this court process. So in your will, you can say, I don't want, you know, one of my children to get anything. I don't have a good relationship with him. I want the others to inherit, you know, mm -hmm. in either mm -hmm. equal shares or whatever disposition you want. Or if you want to give some to charity or a friend, no one, you know, there's the statute will operate unless you have a will. So that in itself is a great motivation to have a will if you don't want the state to decide the disposition of your property. But that process, that sounds lengthy and could be expensive. It's How long very, would it take? Yeah. So probate is a little bit better, right? It's a step up from the administration in terms of length and cost, and I'll explain that. So you're not avoiding a court process here, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. The probate process is taking, depending on the county, I'm saying, I think you're looking at, from my experience in various counties, an average of about six months at wow. least. And this is like a very um optimistic view mm -hmm, <laughs> but mm -hmm. for example in king's county the petitions literally sit there um for months and months before the surrogate judge gets to look at them why it's not because they're lazy or incompetent it's because there's such a backlog not just mm -hmm. because of covid so pre-covid there was still you're looking at minimum six months time post-covid of course there's still been this pent-up delay so now they're right. kind of getting back up to speed but even then there's one clear there's, Arena. There's one judge, one mm -hmm. surrogate for every county and for every person whose wow. estate has to be administered or guardianship, you have one judge. That so of course they have their clerks, but it's it's a very, very busy docket. Uh -huh. So, so it takes it a long time. If your loved one passed away, unfortunately, and you have debts to, de to deal with, you were expecting counting on this inheritance, you may have to wait six months and longer, maybe eight, optimistic. nine months. Because probates and administrations, most of the time, they have some sort of kinks. They're not as simple as you think. Because right. you have to you have to notify and cite the nearest kin, even in a will. It's there's no privacy there. Mm -hmm. So they, there's a, a minor. Oh my goodness, they have to appoint a guardian ad litem mm -hmm. if you have a minor benefit. So the, and these things take years, years. Wow. So I'm literally, literally saying optimistic six months. And I really sometimes I believe your sibling or somebody else can contest what's happening in the- Oh yeah, of course. Webbing. That's why they're given the right to be cited. Yeah, right. so they can- and then It could be a whole litigation that could take years. 
to decide. Right. So for ex ex that example that I gave a little bit earlier, you want to disinherit your son in the will. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That son is going to get note. He has to get notice of that will and a copy. He's not going to be will. happy. And if she's not, not happy, if she thinks mom was under duress or had dementia at the time she signed right, it, right. he's going to be contesting it. Mm -hmm. He has another copy of some other instrument. So a, a trust avoids all of these um, okay. things in, in probate. That's one advantage of doing a trust, of course. And mm -hmm. the cost, because you mentioned, you know, definitely <laughs> it's expensive. It's very expensive. So for the attorney's fees, you're looking at thousands of dollars. The court fee is based on the value of the estate. The highest okay. court fee for any estate, a half a million or over, is twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a court fee. Okay. You're looking at the lawyer's fee, and I've seen attorneys who do charge percentages of the estate. I've seen three percent, six percent. So oh, that's like can... a trustee, right? A trustee who? No, the attorney no? who does the probate, who oh, they wow. charge. Sometimes they charge percent. I've seen it. Wow. I've seen it multiple oh, occasions. So they're, you know. Apparently, I guess it's something that would be upheld in a challenge of attorney's fees. They do mm -hmm. sometimes charge uh, a percentage of the estate value. So that's that very hefty if you're looking at, yeah, you course. know, your real property is, is worth at least a million dollars in, in many areas in New York. So three to six sure. percent just to pay the lawyer to deal with the probate. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what about a trustee? Don't you need a trustee as well? From the need court? an executor, uh, executor, which is which is the yes, whoever who who's going to administer, they marshal all the assets and distribute them to the beneficiaries. That you appoint them in your will, which again is another advantage. You That's get to also decide. costly. Yes, mm. the administrator exact. They have fees. Administrators and executors have a statutory rate of fees, mm -hmm. which you can circumvent in the will. You could do more or less depending I on see. what you want. Okay. They're also a percentage schedule. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, very good. Now, but if you create a trust ahead of time, and I know your your office uh, does that, can you explain uh, a little bit how that works and how that makes yes. the process more painless? Okay, so I think it's very important to understand that the only assets that are going to pass through a will are those that are titled in your name. So any okay. asset that you tr properly transfer into a trust is no longer titled in your name and mm -hmm. will not go through that court process of probate or administration. The will will have nothing to do with it. So when you have a trust, it's important not just to have a blank instrument, the trust. You have to transfer either the account that you want to pass through mm -hmm. the trust into the name of it or the real property. Whatever assets you want to pass pursuant to the trust, you have to retitle in the name of the trust. That way, those assets will not go through any court process. They will pass automatically. Perfect. After post post your passing, so that's a huge savings in time and mm -hmm. cost and headache and privacy, which is mm -hmm. a very important concern. Of course. The longer I'm in practice, the more I see all these complications with probate processes. That's an interesting yeah. point that people don't think about. Privacy. Yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. this day and age. Uh, and we talked in our prior videos how through a trust you can uh, qualify for Medicaid. Right. So certain, you save absolutely. lots of money for uh, your medical expenses. Yes. Trust can have so many advantages that wills do not. Mm -hmm. Trust can fu uh, function in the form of Medicaid eligibility. Mm -hmm. Trust can function similarly to get you asset protection. Okay. And trust can also help you avoid or minimize estate taxes, depending on your net worth, which may be a very large concern. That's so trust point. are vehicles that we use in many instances. They may not be appropriate for, for everyone. I just want to also mention something super important because we're talking about the complexity of probate. Probate is even more cumbersome and very difficult when you have properties in multiple jurisdictions. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if you live, if you're living in New York and you have property in New York, but you have property as well in Florida and Which you know, okay. Pennsylvania, right? Mm -hmm. So many people have properties in multiple jurisdictions, even a vacation home, right? right. You're going to need to do ancillary probate, or if you mm -hmm. didn't have a real ancillary administration, so you every can state. a licensed attorney. Yes. Wow, that gets very costly. So multiple jurisdiction always triggers for me do a trust um, in order to avoid those, you know, you and avoid course, all that. Right. Yeah, but the trust sometimes. Again, depending on the nature of the property, if it's just a bank account, this is probably the most useful mm -hmm. advice that I can give everyone and it won't mm -hmm. cost you a penny. Put a beneficiary, a transfer on death beneficiary on your bank account. 
because instead, you know, you don't need to do a trust for a bank account. It will be similar to a life insurance or retirement account. Okay. You name a beneficiary. And it doesn't a- have to go through any court process. You don't need a trust for it. There's many other reasons you may consider doing a trust for those properties. But if your sole concern is avoidance of probate, for many assets, you can accomplish that without having to do a trust just by mm-hmm. retitling and adding a beneficiary designation to even a checking account. Mm-hmm. Arina, you know, my uh, biggest takeaway here after I heard you explain uh, about all the complexities, about what happens when somebody passes away, you think you find peace. No, there's more headache. Uh, yeah, to plan avoid ahead, that, you have less headache. Exactly, plan ahead, yes. your, your, relative, you know, your nearest kin, your loved exactly. ones will have less of a headache. Exactly. Planning is beneficial for them. You're, yeah. Yes, that's what I was getting at, that it sounds like you have to go to an attorney who is knowledgeable, who does just this, trust and estates, retirement planning, and take all your assets, take everything you have, bank accounts, houses, accounts, businesses. Uh, Think about all your relationships, about all your uh, kids, legitimate and illegitimate. Think about your wives, your ex-wives, your future wives. And you have to have somebody like, Arena Yadgarova, map it out, plan yeah. it for you, all in, uh, in different uh, documents and in instruments so that when you pass on, you can have a peace of mind and make it easy for them to move on. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Arena, thank you so much. This was very informative. Of course, what you heard here today, that's just general advice. Arena gave for you a broad, broad, broad landscape. If you want specific uh, consultation on your specific uh, situation, call the number on the bottom of the screen. Law Office of Arena Yadgara. Important to go early, don't delay. Everybody, thank you very much. Thank you, Arena, for your time. Until thank next you, time. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Be bye-bye. well. Take bye. Care.